Hey everyone, Luke Ruth here. Welcome back to your Tackle HD Tip of the Week. Do you have a love-hate relationship with this thing right here? Today I'm going to show you my thoughts and opinions on how to rig an Alabama rig, what kind of rod line setup I throw it on. Let's get into this. So to get started, I, I love the Flash Mob, Flash Mob Juniors. I've got some Shane's Bates A-Rig, Six Cents. Really doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you're willing to spend your money on, they all work well. The yums get a bad rap. I've never had a bad problem with the yums, so that's the most available. So that's usually what we're talking about. We're talking for anybody, but I run an eight ounce flat shad VMC jig head, and the point of that hook being very, or the point of that hook, the point of that head being very, very narrow to me. I think it lets the tail, of the swim bait, do a lot of the action. So I really, really like this head. Um, got a little stouter hook in it than most, so I'm a big, big fan of the VMC flat shad jig heads. But you're just gonna open up your clasp just like this, and you're gonna slide all these on. All your clasp like this. They don't need to be on there a certain way. As long as you get them on the clasp, the swivel will do the rest of the work for you guys. So don't be real worried about getting them on there frontwards, backwards. There is no right or wrong way as long as they are attached. All right, all those are on there now. So now we're going to pick our swim baits. Uh, I already forgot to mention, I've already got my dummies attached up here. They're attached by a center pin spring. You can find these online. They're actually kind of expensive for what they are. I'm sure you can find them other places. I usually buy the owner ones or the spro ones, but you just twist your swim bait. Those are your dummies. In Missouri here, we're only allowed to have three hooks, so we got to have dummies. I try to keep, keep them on as straight as I can. I don't think it really, really matters. Half of them don't kick and half of them do kick. You got to keep finding swim bait till you work. I've had really good luck with the dummies with no weight. With the uh, reaction innovations, a little dippers, but I'm finding out the tackle the smaller tackle HD ones work really, really well up here too. This is just by having this rig, so I'm going to use it for example. Now, for my main body, I am going to use the tackle HD swimmers. I'm starting to really, really like these swim baits. They're very, very durable, a lot more durable than a Kai Tech. Um, so, I'm starting to really enjoy these. I've been throwing these a lot of my Alabama rigs recently. So, I got Crystal Shad. We're going to pick us out three of these, and we're going to put them on our heads. Number one thing is when you're rigging these, you really need to make sure you rig them straight. Um, if you don't rig them straight, you're going to have a bunch of problems with swim baits not swimming right. So get up here real close. Do yourself a good deed and take your time and rig them straight the first time. That way you ain't going to mess with them the rest of the day. Pro tip, if you rig them a little bit long or short, you can always take and rip that plastic just a little bit right there on that hook. And it'll make them sit a little straighter on that hook. So three, two more to go and we're done here. All right, so we got our rig all finished. It should look something like this. We got our two dummies up top. We got eight ounce BMC jig heads down here with our Tackle HD swimmers on. So now we're ready to put it on a rod and reel. What are we going to choose? Well, there's a lot of different applications you can choose. Some people like a really, really long rod, 711X heavy, 711 heavy. Some people like a shorter, heavier rod, 73 heavy, 73X heavy. I like personally like a 76X heavy. That's what I can throw it on the best. I use an Abu Garcia Revo X. They're a really cheap reel. I don't suggest using really really expensive reels for your a-rig reels they seem to give out over time because this lure is pretty heavy you're chucking it a lot in a day's time a lot of drag pulling the bait through the water so for me i tend to use a cheaper reel but i have had no problems out of the revo x been using it for three years still throws like a dream and i can get those fish out of those brush piles now let's talk about the line we're going to rig this on let's go ahead and get her tied on and talk about the line all right if y'all see my knot time video later in the week you're really going to like this knot for this because you don't got to go around the Alabama rig. You just take it and twist it. One, two, three, four, five. Time to try tie a Palomar knot on a rig. It's really a pain in the butt. So slide her back up through here. Ready to go. All right, for me, if I'm throwing my Alabama rig, I really, really like a 7.6X heavy pride rod. That's my new go to. A lot of good tip on this rod, but plenty, plenty of backbone to throw this Alabama rig all day. Not have any problems as far as soreness in my arm or my wrist. Like I said, 7.3 to 1 Revo X. Just stay between a 6.3, six, 6.4, six, six, and a 8.1 to 1. You guys are fine on your A-Rigs. I typically like a 7.3, seven, 7.5. Seven, I've learned to reel it slower, so I really, really like this reel because I don't reel it too fast. But also, if I need to pick up some line, if fish knock slack, it means a lot of times that's how big fish are going to bite this, guys. They're going to knock tons of slack in your line. Real, real, real come to, set the hook, and you're going to have a dit net. It's a big one. 
So I like throwing on 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon and this is controversial to a lot of people. A lot of people like throwing Alabama rig on braid but I got a funny story. One time I watched an old boy rig up high dollar rig and all these swim baits and stuff and he had them tied on his dick and he dipped it down in the water a little ways to make sure it cast and everything fine before he took off. He got to his first spot, went to cast it with the braid on there, snap. 20 degrees outside, his line froze in his reel, lost his rig, lost everything, swim baits, they all gone. So that's my problem with braid. Get you guys a rod that'll do the work for you. Don't trust your line to do the work for you. This fluorocarbon doesn't have much stretch. It handles the rig just fine. If you get hung in a brush pile, it'll still bend your hooks out half the time or so. Get you guys a lure retriever. You're really, really worried about that. But I like the line a lot better. I think I get a few more bites. I don't have to worry about the fluorocarbon freezing up on side of my reel. It's just all around a better line for me. Um, let's talk about fishing this thing a little bit. If you got live scope, of course, you're going to go out and look for objects. You're going to go out look for brush piles, rock piles, drops. Guys, I'm telling you, you can throw it in the same place without live scope. I learned to throw this thing before we had live scope. I still do the old count it down method a lot. My boat's sitting in 21 foot of water. I know that uh, Flash Mob Jr. sinks 7 foot every 3 seconds with 8 ounce heads and dummies on it. I can keep it down there in that 18 to 20 foot just fine without live scope or any of that. And we throw over the same stuff we threw over forever. Now we can just see it. So... Don't feel like you can't throw an Alabama rig just because you don't have live scope. That's very, very untrue. It's still a very effective lure. It's actually kind of the equalizer for you guys that don't have live scope. You can go out and still have a chance of catching lots of big fish, throwing Alabama Alabama rig in the wintertime. Um, that's my Alabama rig tips of the week. I hope this helps y'all catch a few more fish. Like I said, this is my preferred way to rig it, rod, reel, and line. You guys tell me how you do it down in the comments. So until next time, we'll see y'all later.